I'm Tyrick Jones. I'm the managing editor. I'm Chris Post, contributing writer. I'm Master Lufkin. I'm also a contributing writer. And this is your daily Star Trek news roundup for the week of March 17, 2024. So first up this week, um, Black Mirror, which is sort of a modern day technological twilight zone kind of anthology series uh they did um in one or one or two seasons ago they did a star trek um a star trek homage and they're doing a sequel and aster you uh wrote this up so you want to talk a little bit about it yeah so the original episode was uss callister um and basically the premise is it's this this programmer who like makes a game that's essentially like a role playing game, and then he like uploads the consciousnesses of his coworkers into this like Star Trek role playing game and makes them all his crew, and he makes himself captain. Um, and he like is like taking out all his work frustration on like the consciousness of his coworkers, and he'll like be like rude to them or like if they wronged him, they'll be like, "You go do this super dangerous task," and like that's that's the premise. Right. So he's like, you know, using like escapism to like cope with his world or whatever. And then spoilers um, for the episode. But basically what ends up happening is they revolt against him and they kill him in the game. So he's gone. And then so the next episode will presume is presumably going to be about these characters who are in the game sort of living out Star Trek on their own and learning to live without their captain. So yeah, and then so uh, Netflix just announced this with their announcement of the new season of Black Mirror, and like the way they did the announcement was super cool. It was like a video, um, because they Black Mirror announcements are always weird. I don't if you don't follow Black Mirror, it's always like cryptic, but they do like they're like six new episodes, and they had like a dot showing like each episode like loading, and then the last dot was the USS Callister symbol, um. So, so then that everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're making a new USS Callister episode. And they're like, you got it. That's what we're doing. But like that's <laughs> that's sort of how they announced it. And I'm a huge fan of the I'm a huge fan of Black Mirror and the Black Mirror announcements. Um so yeah, I so that's really exciting. I'm definitely gonna watch it. Um yeah, and I think a lot of people are super excited about it. Yeah. I've seen a few episodes of Black Mirror. I haven't seen many, and I I have not seen the USS Callister episode. And it's all it's been on my list of things that I need to like go to Netflix and watch, and I just haven't gotten around to it. So maybe maybe now's the time, and maybe now I'll uh, I'll see that episode so I can. I could just spoil it for you. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I didn't. I just assumed you'd seen it. it. Yeah, no, I, I, it's okay. I've heard and read enough about it that I know what it is, and I get it, and I, I am a little ashamed that I haven't actually watched it. But yeah, uh, I, I haven't seen it either. So, <laughs> I, uh, I, I saw, I, uh, I think I was on YouTube and I saw some clips, I think, from it, but I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen any of a Black Mirror, not, not a single episode. So, um, it's, uh. I don't know. It, 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 I'm aware of it. It just is not something I ever, I ever got around to watching. So, uh, I may go back and cherry pick and just watch those those particular episodes, but I haven't seen it. Next up, Chris, you reported on um, uh, the president of CBS, George Cheeks, uh, talking about prioritizing Star Trek. So, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, so that got picked up by a number of the, uh, the the Star Trek news reporting uh, uh, agencies, and I went uh, back and I found the the original interview. It's a Q and A interview, so you can uh, if you if you go uh, Vulture was the uh, the I think it was Vulture, yeah, uh, who did it, and it's a really long interview, uh, and and he talks about a lot of things to do with Star Trek and Paramount, um, but um, basically, you know, Star Trek is part of paramount paramount is in this kind of state of flux uh because of the potential sale of of paramount and and the, and or a merger there's all kinds of things that have been talked about and uh right now cbs uh when you look at ratings which is a weird thing because with streaming it's it's so different and nobody really talks about their streaming numbers but 
when you look at old school broadcast television ratings, CBS is number two behind NBC, but it's close. It's very, very close. And so he thinks after sweeps week, CBS will be number one. And uh, but, uh, you know, shows like Discovery aren't on CBS. That, so so they don't factor into it. So the interviewer kind of steered that way. Like, what about these these streaming only shows? And uh, uh, Cheeks uh, said, you know, that the streaming shows are an important and vital part of Paramount and that Star Trek will continue to be a vital part of Paramount's plan for the future. And he didn't explicitly say the words Star Trek legacy. Um but he did say that they are kind of pumping the brakes a little bit on some of the Star Trek content because basically they don't want to oversaturate the market. I mean, it's their market. They're, they're the only, I mean, aside from, from Prodigy on Netflix now. Yeah. But basically he said, we want these shows to be really good. We want to put our best effort into them and we don't want to have just too much stuff out there at one time for the consumers. We want these stories to be significant and we want them to matter as much to the fans as they do to us. And so, um, and so he didn't say, and that's why we have a greenlit uh, legacy, but you, you get the idea that that's, there's, there's a lot of balls in the air, so to speak with, with Star Trek right, right yeah. now. And, and so I think that, uh, I think that they kind of took a look at it and they said, you know what? Maybe we could do better if we did less. And so I think that that is the direction that, that at least in his mind, that Paramount is, is taking. Yeah. And this brings up some questions for me because Paramount is actively looking for a buyer. Um, so what, what, did, what George Cheek said, is that going to hold true if somebody like we didn't report on it this week, but Apollo, the company Apollo um, has bid something like $11 billion or something like that for, for Paramount. So, um, and the Apollo owns, owns Skydance. So if, if Apollo or HBO or whoever ends up buying Paramount, is that going to change what Cheeks has said about, about, um, about the streaming, about Star Trek being prioritized? Or is, is another company coming in going to be like, we'd rather, we'd rather focus on Tracker, which is their new show, or, or you know, something else? Um, so I just wonder how it all is going to fit. I'm, I'm no genius at, at like business type things, but I, I just wonder how it's all going to fit, fit together. Uh, Astor, do you have any thoughts? I'm just envisioning Star Trek as an HBO original series and cringing just a little bit. I love I love HBO original series for the most part. We could have our um uh, Strange New Worlds Batman crossover. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too far. Too yeah. far. <laughs> well, you know, like I'm I'm watching I'm doing my 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 watch of Discovery again, and it is still a little jarring for me for all of the coarse language that is in discovery. Now, don't get me wrong. I I am known to use coarse language myself. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of Tarantino films, but when when it's coming out of the mouth of Star Trek incense, it's a little it's a little jarring for me. And so if they were to get picked up by HBO, I don't know that I could handle full frontal nudity in a Star Trek show. I that might be that might be <laughs> that might just be too far for me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, once again, I'm not a prude. I don't have a problem with with nudity in art, but but maybe not in, not not in my Star Trek. <laughs> but but, but uh, to to your point, Rick, about about if uh, it would would some other owner prioritize Star Trek, I think that that the risk might be that another owner might over prioritize star trek i mean when you look at what is in the the paramount lineup star trek probably has the most name recognition the most built-in fan base and so i would be afraid that they would just go full out you know lean into it and maybe go like cheeks is afraid of and oversaturate us with 50 new star trek shows 
yeah. uh, with with a lower quality, and then everybody be like, "Oh, well, Star Trek was great till they ruined it," and then then it goes away again for another twenty years. Um, well, and that's the thing with modern Star Trek. I a lot of a lot of people are like, "I want my Star Trek, and I want it now." And I'm like, but I I like the higher quality Star Trek. You know, don't you know? Well, I think Cheeks is right. Don't um, don't oversaturate it. Do high quality shows. And if we have to take a few weeks off of watching original Star Trek, there's enough Star Trek now that you know we won't get bored. We can watch well, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in my perfect world, they would have like three active series. With 16 episode seasons, I mean, in my world, there'd be 24 episode seasons like back in the old days of, yep. of television, but 16 episode seasons, if you had three shows producing 16 episode seasons and one starts when the next one ends, basically you would have no time when there wasn't new Star Trek. Right. Of course. And, yeah. and that would be fine for me. I don't need, I don't need three new episodes a week. Just give me one new episode a week, every week of the year. And I would be happy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I agree with that completely. Uh, Aster, anything? Thoughts on anything, you know anything you've said? No, I mean that's. I think I think CBS should hire you. That's genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if 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 they're looking for a consultant, I am available and would be more than happy to to lend my services. <laughs> so. This when we get our zombie Star Trek episodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Well, there'd be one a season. Um, that would just be. <laughs> <laughs> Which if they're running three three uh, Star Treks. Throughout the year, that'd be three uh, zombie episodes a year. Three zombie episodes. Yeah. I, I could figure out new and interesting ways to do it uh, every every time. It would it would I, I could I could make it happen. No problem. That's amazing. I I I think they should make you the head of Paramount Plus. <laughs> <laughs> I I I I have I have notes. I'm ready to go. Just <laughs> <laughs> CBS and Paramount. If you're listening, this is the guy you want. <laughs> um uh next up uh adam nimoy is writing a new memoir about uh his troubled relationship with his father now i'm going to be doing i'm going to be interviewing adam at some point they contacted me and asked me to do an interview with him uh but after you wrote up the the announcement do you want to talk a little bit about it yeah so like you said, he's writing a new uh, memoir about sort of his relationship with his father. And from the synopsis that was released, he talks a lot about how his family was portrayed as like the ideal American family. And he was sort of like, this is not it. That's not true. And he talks about how he was very estranged from his father growing up. And like in the synopsis, there's like this little teaser. He's like, and then I got a note from my father and everything changed. So I, I think it's the book is really about him reconciling his relationship with his father and also how his relationship with his father has impacted him as a father now because he has kids. Um, so I I think it looks really interesting. This isn't his first memoir. Well, technically it is because his first memoir was an anti-memoir. It's what it's called. Um, it's like a comedy book, and it's about him dealing with addiction and uh, mental health struggles and how he overcame that. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm not usually a big memoir fan, but I think I'll give this one a try. It, it honestly looks amazing, and from the synopsis and the little uh, snippets released, I, I'm really excited about it. Now, Adam has directed some Star Trek, and he also... Uh created a documentary about his father right after uh, Leonard's death um, called For the Love of Spock. It's really, it's a great, great memoir or a great, great d documentary. Um, so if you haven't seen it, you should seek it out. It's uh, it's pretty easy to find, I think. And it's, um, it's really, really an interesting uh, documentary. Uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on uh, Adam Nimoy and his memoir? Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to reading it, actually. I've read uh, both of uh, Leonard Nimoy's uh, I Am Not Spock and, and I Am Spock. Uh, and, and so, uh, um, and in those, uh, uh, Leonard Nimoy, he does kind of try, I think, to come to terms uh, with his own 
disappointments uh, in in his in his relationship with his with his family, especially with his children. Um, you get the impression that that family was important to him, uh, and he wanted to be present, and he wanted to be uh, a good father. Um, but you know, and I, I'm a father myself, and and I know that it's it's hard. Um, it's um, the way you think it's going to be before you have kids, and, and the way it is after you have kids are dramatically different and and i think everybody everybody has has parents if you are alive you had parents <laughs> and so there were things that you liked about your relationship with your parents and things that you didn't like about your relationship with your parents and so you think to yourself i am not going to make those mistakes that my parents made and then you find out that either you do make those mistakes or you make up entirely new mistakes of your own and and so um, so I think as a parent, uh, there, for a lot of us, it doesn't go quite the way we wanted it to. And I think Leonard Nimoy addresses that, especially in his second book. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see the son's perspective after having seen the father's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I know Leonard felt like he needed to do as much as he could for his family. Um, I could. He has said... That, you know, especially in the early days, there isn't anything he wouldn't he there is anything he would have said no to if he was getting paid for it because he wanted to um, be able to help him support his family. And that includes things like um, uh, the Hobbit music video that he did, which is terrible. Um, and um, and uh, the universe and I, which was uh, he was Sherlock Holmes investigating the inside of the earth. Um, you know, things like that, that he probably in later years would have said no to, but uh, because he felt like he had to support his family, he did not say no to those things. Um, so I think I think he felt a sense of, um, you know, wanting to do the best for his family. But it, it obviously and I haven't read Adam's book yet, um, but obviously there there are some things that he fell short on uh, while while doing that i think a lot of celebrities even though they're they're working or a lot of people in general a lot of fathers and work and mothers and working parents in general tend to err on the side of i want to make sure that i that i can afford all these things and i can give my uh, child the life they deserve and all that uh but then don't spend enough time with the kid i mean you hear about this all the time um so i'm wondering if that that's part of it so. Yeah, I think there was definitely some, <clears throat> excuse me, some cats in the cradle kind of, uh, kind of thing there. Yeah, um, and it's it's coming out in June, early June, June fourth, I think, right, Aster? Yeah, <laughs> uh, just in time for Father's Day. Father's Day is the sixteenth of June this year. So, <laughs> um, so, and that's sort of when they sent me the press release. That's sort of how they, they, what they send the press release. Just in time for Father's Day. Adam Nimoy talked about his troubled relationship with his father. So, <laughs> um, so you know, I think the the timing is not coincidental there. Um, uh, but we'll see if it's an, uh, you know, a bright happy ending or if it's uh, you know how it how it ends up. I think Astor's right. I think it hopefully will be a, a story of reconciliation. So, um, uh, next up. Uh, we've got, oh, this, this is the last one. It was kind of a slow news week, uh, this week. Um, uh, Paramount has released, uh, some artwork to go along with the fifth and final season of Star Trek Discovery. So Chris, you wrote this one up. You want to talk about it a little? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, we are in, in the, uh, the, the, uh, the short countdown now to, uh, to episode one. For those of us who who don't get the screeners, uh, you know we're in eager anticipation. We've got about two weeks left before we get uh, some some fresh Star Trek, uh, and so they dropped uh, some new images. Now uh, they had uh, previously dropped a few uh, screenshots from episode one, uh, but this was not that. This is beautiful, uh, really, really beautiful artwork. This is like poster quality uh, artwork that they. Uh, 
that they released uh, this week uh, in anticipation of that first episode. Uh, and so um, I went and uh, I checked out all the pieces and and every single one of them, they could be uh, they could be your phone lock screen. I mean, they are they are some 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 good looking pieces. I don't know uh, who who the art team is behind it over there, but uh, they really uh, uh, they really did a good job. They uh, they knocked it out of the park. Like I said, these could be like big subway posters, um, Times Square kind of stuff. They uh, they they are really really uh, good looking pieces. Um, so. Uh, my uh, my phone screen is uh, my my beloved Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, but uh, but I, I did seriously contemplate uh, switching it over uh, to Star Trek. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, they're 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 fantastic pieces. Uh, so if uh, if anybody has an opportunity to go look at them, if you're a fan of Star Trek art, uh, these are uh, I would say that these are better than some of the uh, the movie posters, especially the Next Generation uh, movie posters. So they are they're top notch. Have you had time to check them out, Aster? Oh yeah, I, uh, I <laughs> before you like talked about them, Paramount had not Paramount Star Trek had posted them on their Instagram, and I saw them. I was so excited. I have my Disco season three poster right here, um, and I really hope they make. There's this one post. There's this one artwork that they released where the Enterprise is like silhouetted. Uh, not the Enterprise, Discovery. Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm very tired. <laughs> Discovery. <laughs> it's, it's been a long week, guys. Oh boy, <laughs> where where Discovery is like silhouetted against like an orange sky, and I if they make that into a poster, that is going on my wall immediately. Don't ask me where; I don't have the wall space, evidently. The one thing I will say, I thought the posters were absolutely gorgeous, the artwork. Um, but uh, the one thing I will say is one of them does not look like the other three. Like it's not in the same style; it's more in sort of a boxy. You know, it's a it's the Discovery um with like i don't know it's it's it just doesn't look that that's my favorite that's it's a great one that's the one you were talking about right yes. it's it's great but it is so far removed from what the other three look like um i kind of wish we'd had two in that style and two in the in the style that they they were in uh just to sort of but that's just me i just like things to you know, <laughs> <laughs> like that symmetry Right, I do. I, I'm very, I'm a very symmetrical person. See, um, <laughs> um, but I, I, I do, I do like symmetry, and the fact that one is different from the others, it, it just, it irks me slightly. But there, I like them all. They're all great. They're all great. So you know, I guess I can't complain too hard. Yeah. No, I was, I was really surprised uh, when. Uh... When I got the the press release that said, "Hey, we're releasing new artwork," it's like, "Yeah, okay, of course you're releasing new artwork." And then I saw it, and I was like, "Wow, this this does deserve a press release. This yeah. people people should be going to look at these because they are. It's it's more than just, hey, the show is coming out. These there there was there was some creativity uh, uh, that that was that was put into them. They're they're really really beautiful. Yeah. Oh, ordinarily, when we print one of these, I might consider like showing one and then saying you can go and look at the others at this other place but they were so beautiful that i did a whole gallery you can you can go right to our our article and there's a gallery underneath of all, all five of them actually the, the original one that came out as well um uh there it's just beautiful beautiful art celebrating the series which it should be celebrated um you know uh it's you know very sad that it's coming to a close but we're getting all this special stuff so um, you know, that's great. Um, uh, that's, that's it for this week in news. There was not a lot this week. It was a little slow week. I just want to close out by saying, uh, to our Patreon members, if you are a Patreon member, thank you very much. Your support is really helpful. Um, you're watching this, uh, video two days early. Um, you'll also be getting a special feature from it, which is a, a deleted clip. Uh, if you are not, a patreon supporter uh please consider doing that uh it really helps us um we we have hosting fees that we have to pay for um we have writers that we have to pay we have um all kinds of things um uh not a cent of it goes into my pocket it all goes back into the service uh so you'll get um 
videos like this two days early, but not just this. Um, interviews, I just did an interview with um, the Baker Street Irregulars about Sherlock Holmes and Star Trek. I've got an interview coming up with Adam Nimoy. I've got, I, I got an, an email from John Delancey this week. I'm going to be doing an interview with him and his son uh, for Father's Day. Um, all of these things are going to come out two days early for Patreon supporters. Plus, you'll get, I, we only have so much time, so you'll get deleted clips from all of these things. Um, I'm also working on merch, and I know I say this every week, and I promise it's coming. Um, I, it just, my coming life is soon. coming soon to a Patreon <laughs> near you. Um, it, it, but it, I'm just very busy right now and i'm i'm working on it and it's it's a time commitment so i'll i'll get it out there and as soon as i get it out there um i'll let you see what it is and uh you can come and support us uh for that as well uh so uh you can go to www.patreon.com slash daily star trek news uh even even supporting us for a dollar a month one measly dollar a month is going to help us um cover our costs uh, so thank you in advance. Uh, well, uh, Chris Post, Esther Lufkin, thank you so much once again. Uh, we will do this again next week. <laughs>